Что, что? Это вы принесли? Угу. Спасибо. Да. Молодцом. Давайте ваши. Это и мужской таз, и женский, правильно? Угу. Хорошо. У вас какой э, факультет? А курс? Вам не, не надо, спасибо. Good afternoon, my dear students. Today uh, we have the last lecture for human anatomy uh, for the foreign students. Just a moment, please. Wait a little bit. Спасибо вам, да, до свидания. Окей. So, today lecture is going to be about muscular system. And we also uh, will talk about uh, all muscles we could find uh, in the, our head. So, if you are uh, okay and everything is correct, with uh, the uh, translation, please let me know. I see only three. Uh, I see only three people. No, five people today. Uh, I don't understand why we have only five students from uh, about eighty person who had to uh, see and visit our lecture. It is very interesting. It is a topic to discuss with the, uh, with the your dean, maybe. Okay, I see. I see only name and uh, group number, but I didn't see any response uh, uh, about the translation. Is everything correct? And you can uh, could uh, could you hear me? Uh, it's interesting. Maybe nobody, nobody uh, can. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Fun. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's um, let's come to the lecture. And uh, as you see, this is a plastinated full body specimens, and this it is uh, uh, mostly all uh, plastinated muscles in the human body. Uh, I start with uh, saying that our life is movement. It's hard to imagine what life would be like without muscle tissue. 
we could not sit, stand, walk, speak, or grab objects. The blood in our body did not circulate in the in the vessels because there would be no heart to move the blood through the vessels. Our lungs could not rhythmically fill with air, with air, and even in the digestive tract there would be no movement along any of our internal organs. So this lecture will be about myology. Myology uh, equal muscles, myo equal muscles, and uh, as you guess, logy equal study of. It is a scientific study of muscles and uh, muscular tissue. So let's start myology. Here you see three types of muscular tissue and you see skeletal muscular tissue, cardiac muscular tissue and smooth muscle, muscle tissue. Also the three types of muscular tissue share some properties. They differ from one another in their microscopic in their microscopic anatomy, location and how they are controlled by the nervous and endocrine systems. Skeletal muscle tissue is so named I mean this skeletal muscle tissue is uh, named because the function of most skeletal muscles is to move the bones. Skeletal muscle tissue is referred to as a striated because you see this is a, some stripes, striated muscle tissue because alternating light and dark protein bands or striations in this uh, combination of uh, dark and light stripes. And they are visible when the tissue is examined under a microscope. Skeletal muscle tissue works primarily in a voluntary manner. So we control uh, we control uh, the uh, contraction of skeletal muscle muscle tissue um, with our brain. Next group is cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart where it forms most of the heart wall. Like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is striated. You see also dark and white stripes. But uh, its action is involuntary. Its alternating contraction and relaxation cannot be consciously controlled. We could not, we can't control our cardiac muscle tissue by our brain. Uh, and another uh, difference is that here, uh, here the uh, uh, elements in skeletal muscle tissue are long and huge, but uh, it is a multi multi-nuclear cells. But here, uh, this is the only only uh, one cells with one nuclear. So this is a difference. And the last. The last group or type of muscular tissue is 
smooth muscle tissue. It is located in the walls of hollow internal structures, such as the blood vessels, airways, and most organs in the abdomen, abdominopelvic cavity. It is also attached to hair follicles in the skin. It is also smooth muscle tissue. Uh, it gets its name from the fact that under a microscope it appears non striated or smooth. If you see, here is no striated lines. The action of smooth muscle tissue is usually involuntary as well as cardiac muscle tissue. So, these two types of uh, involuntary but skeletal muscle tissue we can control. We can control and act by our brain. What is the function of muscular tissue? First is uh, producing body movements. First of all, it is uh, regarding to the skeletal muscle tissue. Total, total body movements, such as the walking and running, and the localized movements, such as the grasping a pencil, keyboarding, or resting your hand, really on the integrated function of skeletal muscles, bones, and joints. Second, it was first producing body movements, but the second one is stabilizing body position. Skeletal muscle contractions stabilize joints and help maintain body position, such as a standing or sitting. When you stand, your uh, skeletal muscles are contracted. Postural muscle contract continuously when you are awake. For example, sustained contraction in neck muscles hold your head upright when you are listening intently to an anatomy lecture here today. The third function is storing and moving substance within the body. Sustained contraction or ring-like bands of smooth muscles called sphincters may prevent outflow of the contents of the whole organ. Temporary storage of food in the stomach or urine in the urinary blood or the urine in the urinary bladder is possible because smooth muscle sphincters close off the outlets of these organs. Cardiac muscle contraction pump blood through the body's blood vessels. Contraction and relax, relaxation of smooth muscles in the walls of blood vessels help adjust their diameter and thus regulate the rate of blood flow. Smooth muscle contraction also move food and substances such as bile and enzymes through the gastrointestinal tract. Push gametes, sperm and oocytes through the reproductive systems and Propyl urine through the urinary system. Skeletal muscle contraction indirectly promote the flow of lymph throughout the body and air the return of blood in veins to the heart. The fourth function is producing 
heat. As muscular tissue contracts, it also produces heat, a process called thermogenesis. Much of the heat released by muscles is used to maintain a normal body temperature. Involuntary contraction of skeletal muscles, known as shivering, can dramatically increase the rate of heat production. So sometimes when we feel cold, we start to move and it, product, it, it products the heat. You see here the picture uh, with Ivan Sechenov. He was famous, he is famous, uh, great Russian physiologist. And he uh, He had uh, a couple uh, a couple good expression about uh, skeletal muscles moving. You see here that first expression is does a child laugh at the sight of a toy? Does Garibaldi? It was the uh, Italian revolutionary smile when they lead. To, they lead him to execution for exercise love for his homeland. Does a girl tremble at the first thought of love? Does Newton create and write the laws of the world? Everywhere the last fact is the muscle movement. Everything we do in our life laughing, uh, crying, <laughs> thinking, and uh, even thinking, is this a muscle, I think it's also muscle movement. Uh, all the infinitive, another expression is that all the infinitive variety of external manifestation of brain activity is finally reduced to only one phenomenon, muscle movement. So, the Movement is our life. When there is no movement, that is a, a death. Another expression I like a lot. This is uh, thoughts. Thoughts, I think you understand what does it mean. It is a reflex inhibited in its motor part. Motor part we mean uh, we mean muscle skeletal mostly skeletal muscle good expression is it isn't it what what the properties have all types of muscular tissue. It is a electrical excitability, a property of both muscles and nerve cells. It's uh, uh, it is a ability to respond to certain stimuli by producing electrical signals called action potential. That is uh, all. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, common future for all muscular tissue. The second is contractility. Contractility. It is the ability of muscular tissue to contract forcefully when stimulated by an action potential. The third one is extensibility. It is the ability of muscular tissue to stretch within limits without being damaged. 
The connective tissue within the muscle limits the range of extens extensibility and keeps it with the contractile range of the muscle cells. So it's uh, the uh, its control, its uh, connective tissue helps to keep to keep the form and keep the length for mostly all muscles, all skeletal muscles. And the fourth fourth property is elasticity, elastic. Uh, elasticite, sorry, elasticite, elasticite, is the ability of muscular tissue to return to its original length and shape after contraction or extension. So, this is the four main properties uh, which is uh, uh, which are uh, which are the common for all types of muscular tissue. Next one. This is a comparative characteristic of the magazine. Угу. Сергеевна, ну вариант вариант какой? Можно э, можно, конечно, и сброситься все это, но давайте подумаем. Так быстро, наверное, не найдем. Правильно? У меня просто. Давайте баклажан попробуем. Если там будет, то это удобно. Хорошо? Все, позвоните, да. Я на лекции пока. Sorry. Угу. Э, так. Uh, this is the uh, table with uh, comparative characteristic of a smooth and skeletal muscle tissue. So, as you see, uh, the uh, smooth muscle tissue uh, the has the fibers, uh, fibers about 50 microns in length, but skeletal muscle tissue uh, elements like um, fibers have uh, have uh, have lengths up to 12 centimeters. Uh, the thickness is also uh, is less than in uh, less in smooth muscle than in skeletal muscle tissue. It is the last one has about uh, 100 microns in the um, diameter. Uh, the number of nucleus only one, but up to 120 in skeletal muscles. Innervation is uh, uh, the uh, smooth muscle tissue uh, is controlled by autonomous nervous system, but uh, skeletal muscle tissue is controlled by somatic nervous system. That is the difference. Somatic is the is the younger uh, younger system than uh, autonomic nervous system. Contraction for smooth muscle uh, is involuntary, but uh, we can control skeletal muscles with our brain. And location, uh, it is location mostly in all organs and vascular walls. So. Uh, it is very, um, you can find smooth muscles almost everywhere, in all organs in our system, because all organs have vessels. But uh, skeletal muscle tissue, we could find only in skeletal muscles. Uh, this is the uh, movement, movement system, not everywhere. We will uh, we will focus uh, of uh, the skeletal muscles today. So I would uh, 
like to tell you that there are about 639 muscles in our body uh, and uh, uh, one, uh, 317 muscles are paired and only five muscles are unpaired. It is interesting fact that uh, muscles mass is different is different in a different period of life. Uh, for newborn it is only 20%, then in adult it is 40% in male body and uh, 35, about 35% in female body. And when we get all the uh, mass of uh, skeletal muscles uh, is decreased up to 30% uh, in old people. And uh, when uh, we are uh, we are see take a look on the athlete like this person, I hope he is an athlete. Doesn't he? Uh, so. Uh, uh, they uh, the relative weight of muscles uh, would be increased up to 60 of body weight so from 20 to 60 that is a normal uh, correlation this is a normal range between the skeletal muscles uh, relative weight in our body. A couple of words about uh, structure. Despite their diversity, all muscles have a roughly similar structure plane. You see here uh, different muscles, but uh, almost in all uh, these organs we could find two components. One is the tendon, here is tendon, that is the part of muscles which is uh, fixed or mm, uh, or combined with the bone. But the uh, second is the belly. This is a part of muscles between two tendons. When a skeletal muscle contracts, it moves one of the articulating bones. The two articulating bones usually don't move equally in response to contraction. One bone remains stationary or near its original position. Either because of um, the muscle muscles stabilize the bone by contracting and pulling it in the opposite direction or because its structure makes it less movable anytime this is the two points almost in every muscles Originally, the attachment of a muscle tendon to the stationary bone is called the origin. Here you see this name, origin. For example, the um, biceps brachii muscle is fixed or orange, have origin in a scapula and the second is uh, on humerus. The attachment of the muscles are the tendon you see here, this is an other tendon to the 
another bone is called the insertion so this is the origins for biceps brachii but this is the insertion almost uh, almost every muscle have origin or origins and insertion or insertions it would be not only one point it would be two point sometimes three point insertions tendon tendon is a collection of intramuscular connective tissue in the form of a dense cord here you see tendon this is a tendon of muscles and it attaches the muscle to the bone or sometimes to the cartilage here you see cartilage insertion and here you see bone insertion of the muscles and there are two types of tendons in uh, the place of attachment that would be that would be <coughs> that would be <coughs> bone insertion or cartilage insertion. <coughs> I'd like to add that uh, the tendons are very strong structures. Some of the tendons in our body can withstand a force of up to 600 kilograms. You see here, this is the <coughs> tendon of quadra, quadriceps, um, quad, quadriceps, uh, quadriceps femoris. Uh, it uh, it can withstand up to 600 kilograms. That is a huge, huge number of kilograms. This is a very force muscle in our body. Next slide show the tender, tender, mm, we call it uh, Achilles tendon that is in our leg and you see um, the tendon under the scanning electron microscope here you see collagen collagen fibers uh, some of them are very strong some of them are very thin but they are inside of tendon and uh, make it very strong structure. Let's see what the inner structure of skeletal muscle is. Each skeletal muscle is a separate organ composed of tense muscle facilities. Here you see the total muscles but inside of uh, you see the epimedium this is external covering of muscles almost all muscles have such as covering and inside you see the uh, uh, 
Perry Museum. This is uh, uh, this is the connective tissue um, septus or um, uh, structures uh, surround uh, surround group of muscular fibers and uh, um, the um, connective tissue around uh, around uh, uh, one muscle fibers we called endomysium so there are three types of connective tissue covering epimysium external perimysium uh, it is uh, intermediate but endomysium it is internal internal connective tissue isolation this is a sum of muscle uh, muscle capsula connective tissue capsula around muscle Possible. Well, next slide. You see how uh, these structures look in another picture. You see the epimysium. I says. External, external covering. Then you see perimysium. Here it covers uh, uh, several, several muscle fibers. But the smallest connective tissue uh, layer we called uh, we called endomysium and it is uh, covering a uh, few mus muscle fibers inside of this uh, this uh, covering sheet At high magnification, the muscle fiber appears stuffed with a little three threads. These small structures are the contractile elements of skeletal muscles, the myofibrils. Myofibrils, which are about uh, uh, about two. Um, Hundred micron in diameter and extend the entire length of the muscle fiber have prominent striations that make the whole muscle fibers look striped. And this is the true. You see inside of each myofibril, you see different component uh, components. And some of them are dark, like here, and some of them are white. That's why we see uh, we see the muscle fibers uh, uh, in uh, in uh, striped. In stri they are striped. This is a, a typical feature of skeletal muscle tissue. Why uh, these um, myofibrils are striped? Because they contain smaller protein structures and we call, uh, we call them filaments or myofilaments. Here you see a picture of all filaments. Thin filaments are about 8 nanometer in diameter and uh, 1 to 2 um, micrometer long and composed mostly of the protein actin. Here you see this uh, type 
of uh, muscles called actin. It is here, actin, actin. It is a glue, green, actin. This is correct name. But another, another. Uh, A protein uh, which uh, which looks like a thick filaments about uh, 16 nanometer in diameter and uh, uh, the same almost the same uh, length uh, call is called myosin and here you see um, molecules uh, of myosin and they are uh, wild actin is green and it is here but uh, myosin is violent and it is here narrow plate shaped regions of dense protein material called is that disc separate one sarcomere from the next we call this uh, this part of myofibril like a sarcomeres, sarcomeres, and this is a um, structure and struct. Uh, this is a structural unit of uh, almost for each skeletal muscle. Uh, supporting proteins that hold the thick filaments together at the center of the H zone we call this we call this H zone yeah is yes uh, uh, that is the uh, that is the uh, this is the zone we call H zone, and uh, here you see uh, as well M line, so named because it is uh, at the middle of sarcomere. So that is the H zone, but the M zone is here, and that is a typical uh, uh, structure uh, of the. Uh, myofibrils, myofibrils. Uh, here you see the um, different uh, different uh, state of the muscle contracted and non contracted relaxed and contracted. Uh, uh, the upper uh, upper scheme is uh, relaxed muscles, but contracted is. Uh, and you see that the uh, all of uh, actin uh, actin proteins uh, go into the uh, contact of uh, myelin proteins and muscles are uh, look like um, maximally contracted and but uh, all, they also have striped structure and another um, fact is that when uh, all uh, thin filaments move toward the M line of each sarcomere, it produces huge, uh, huge power. Uh, sometimes huge, usually uh, <laughs> not. Uh, all people have uh, such as strong muscles, but some of men have them and uh, it it works like a, um, it works like uh, uh, forces uh, when uh, many people are pulling the rope you see here and the amount of tension created is proportional to the number of people involved in this process
as I noted earlier in the uh, in this lecture, the neurons uh, uh, stimulate skeletal muscles fibers to to contract, uh, and uh, they are called somatic motor neurons. Here you see the co connection, uh, the neurons, this is a, a neural process, and its contact to the uh, uh, skeletal muscle fibers. And the uh, electric signals come to the each uh, muscle fibers and uh, makes uh, it con makes it contract to contract uh, all uh, muscles can uh, contract only because uh, it they get they get uh, a lot of uh, nerve impulses from neurons and uh, from nervous tissue in our body But, uh, muscle fibers contract uh, in response to one or more action potentials uh, propagating along its sarcolemma and through its systems of T-tubules. This is the tubules we call T-tubules here. And muscle action potential arise at the neuromuscular junction. Neuromuscular junction uh, we uh, call uh, synapse also. This is the second name. Synapse means neuromuscular junction. And... Uh, uh, it is located between a somatic motor neuron and skeletal muscle fiber. You see here, this is a uh, synapse, and you see the uh, uh, somatic motor neurons, but here is the skeletal muscle fibers. And this connection... Uh, is possible by uh, such small vesicles we call uh, synaptic uh, synaptic bulb and it is the uh, special uh, chemical um, uh, stuff called acetylcholine acetylcholine uh, this is a mediator this is the uh, this is the chemical agent which come into the synaptic uh, synaptic gap and uh, stimulate uh, stimulate postsynaptic membrane, uh, which uh, also um, uh, which also uh, give muscles potential to contract. We know two types of skeletal muscles. It depends on the numbers of muscles fibers. And uh, we call uh, this part myons. Myons. So then, uh, as you see before, I accent uh, your uh, your um, <coughs> idea to uh, uh, understand that myons or motor unit. This is a motor unit. Uh, is a set of muscle fil fibers innervated by on one motor nerve, nerve uh, fiber. And how many motor, uh, how many, uh, my, how many motor, uh, muscle fibers is in one um, uh, neuron fibers? How, how, how many uh, my, uh, mu muscle fibers uh, is in uh, is um, get uh, get impulses from one neuron uh, process. We called we distinguish two types of skeletal muscles. 
that is the dynamic muscles the first group and uh, slow or static muscles usually uh, the dynamic muscles the number of muscle fibers for one myon is not more than 25 percent but in such static muscles we uh, would find up to two or sometimes to three uh, hundred muscles uh, fibers in uh, for one neural fiber usually such muscles are the uh, uh, muscles of the leg uh, and uh, tight they are slow or static muscles but dynamic muscles usually we could find in oculus inside of orbita and these types of skeletal muscles uh, i mean static and uh, dynamic we also called uh, red fibers muscles with uh, static but white fibers muscles for dynamic and uh, they are uh, look they uh, they look different in uh, histological uh, specimens now the functional of the uh, sig uh, this is a uh, functional and clinical significance of skeletal muscles if, if they, they uh, change change uh, body posture they uh, all of this function we discussed before so i don't stop uh, taking consideration that uh, some of muscles especially face muscles uh, help us to communicate each other because we uh, show emotion and our uh, our mood or our uh, relation to the uh, uh, to the people who uh, we are talk there are different uh, muscle classification principles and it uh, depends on the shape, region, function, and origin of the muscles. For example, uh, we uh, distinguish uh, uh, muscles by shape. They would be fusiform, biceps, digastric, broad, bipinnate, unipinnate, and multi-belly. Multi -belly. And they have a lot of belly in one muscle. The, um, uh, we also uh, distinguish long muscles like biceps uh, the uh, triceps uh, has lengths uh, with uh, two times uh, more than the whites and <clears throat> Uh, quadriceps, quadriceps fem, quadriceps muscles in type. Quadriceps, we call it quadriceps femoris. It is on the type. Broad muscles usually have aponeurosis. What does it mean? Aponeurosis is a tendon. It is a tendon of uh, um, broad muscles. It is visible here. Short muscles usually find in the vertebral column and they connect uh, different uh, processes uh, vertebral processes help to move our body uh, pinnate muscles uh, unipinnate or bipinnate sometimes multipinnate located usually in the um, forearm on legs because they control um, movement of, of fingers and another muscle uh, shapes uh, may be uh, maybe uh, square here in uh, antebrachium and sometimes triangular shape this is a depressor depressor uh, depressor anguli oris 
and sometimes uh, uh, muscles looks like serrated serrated because they have this is this uh, parts like a uh, dense because serrate means uh, denticulate denticulate so it is like a uh, like a teeth in our mouth the same uh, same uh, uh, the same looking uh, have uh, serrated muscles uh, also we know deltoid muscles and the lateral lateral position in our uh, shoulder joints sometimes uh, we could find circular uh, circular muscles like uh, around the mouth and around orbit that is they work as a sphincter they contract uh, uh, and uh, uh, also um, sometimes we find uh, we find uh, intermediate tendons in one muscles like here or here or here and that is because uh, these muscles uh, develop developed from uh, different myotomes and the border between myotomes look like a, a small small tendons and the last classification last muscle classification this is a functional classification we uh, distinguish by the uh, type of moving flexors, extensors, because a flexor extensors this type, uh, this is a kind of moving. Abductor and adductor, so this also uh, movement around uh, around sagittal sagittal axis. Rotators, uh, sometimes we call pronation and supination. Pronation in, uh, this is the rotation in, uh, but supination it is rotation out and uh, some, uh, uh, another i hope you understand that we uh, when we move uh, when we move uh, forearm and rotate it uh, um, clockwise so we call this uh, form of movement pronation but when we uh, rotate our uh, forearm out and counter counterclockwise, we call this action as a supination. Uh, muscle uh, also would be sphincters and sometimes dilatators. It depends on their mm, their structure, their uh, form and structure. Muscle works. Muscle works. Uh, usually, um, muscle uh, strength is determined by uh, physiological muscle diameter. Uh, this is the um, this is the square of all uh, myofibrils uh, with the uh, cutting uh, transversely. And uh, the muscle strength is uh, depend on the size of the area support on bones, cartilage or fasts. Uh, also, also, the muscle would be stronger if they have, or they have, uh, they have uh, force. Uh, force uh, origin of the way uh, this is a, um, how to say uh, this is a um, this is a uh, way of uh, origin uh, to the bones sometimes we have uh, such um, combination uh, muscles and connect they they connect to the bones, uh, making very force 
uh, fourth composition. Uh, the force, the trains of muscles is depend on the degree of nervous excitement and also uh, adequate blood supply regulates and uh, gives a good uh, strength to the muscles. Here you see uh, the difference between anatomical and physiological section. Uh, anatomical section is uh, um, just only um, transversely cut all muscles, but uh, physiological section is a plane passing through all muscle fibers. So that is uh, it, it. Sometimes uh, they are equal anatomical section and physiological section, but sometimes uh, physiological section is uh, not equal to the anatomical one. Muscles uh, can be synergism and antagonism. Uh, this is a, a different type. Uh, synergism is a muscle or a group that performs the same movement, but if uh, uh, this um, uh, Muscles group involved in oppositely direction. We call them antagonist. Antagonist. This is different. And uh, a couple of words about level structure and types of levers. Here you see um, the biceps brachy, and uh, we. <coughs> Uh, we uh, decided that skeletal muscles produce movements uh, by pulling on bones. Bones serve as lovers, lovers, levers, and joint acts as uh, uh, fulcrums for the lovers. Here the lever, here the lever. Uh, uh, fulcrum principle is illustrated by the movement of the forearm. Hello. Who's oh, Hello. Да, у нее все, у нее же прислал сертификат вам. Там ее выдают, когда уже второй сделано. Она мне сказала, что все сделано, да. Так я отправил вам сертификат, прикрепил. Так вот, полчаса назад. Ну, не полчаса, но... Ну, сейчас я посмотрю, секундочку, одну секунду. У меня лекция просто сейчас. Так, я отправил ее вам вот в 15.51. Там написал, что она прошла в вакцинацию, сертификат в приложенном файле и прислал. На Ядрину, Мария Андреевна. А вам нужно на нее? Тоже? Хорошо. Сейчас я вам перешлю. Перешлю сейчас. Секундочку. Сейчас, Галина Александровна. Все, отправь. А? Я, по-моему, и вам отправлял на прошлой неделе. Да, я, по-моему, уже сообщал об этом, но я в четверг еще направлял вам. В четверг, не знаю, не получили, наверное, просто от меня. Так я и написал, я и написал специально. Вот я же письмо вам переслал сейчас, и, и, и она, она стоит внизу, это ее письмо, я к ней направлял. Все, спасибо, извините, у меня лекция просто продолжится, хорошо? Угу. Алло. I'm sorry. Let's take back to our lecture. Uh, so <clears throat> there are mm, there are three levers, uh, three types of levers, and they are based 
the placement of the fulcrum, a fort, and lord. And you see here uh, first class levers. Uh, this is uh, mm, we call it mm, we call it uh, like um, fulcrum uh, between the fort and the lord in first class levels uh, uh, schizors and uh, seesaw are example of first class levers and this class uh, lever uh, can produce uh, either a mechanical advantage or mechanical disadvantage depending on whether the fort or the lord is closer to the fulcrum the, the, the second uh, second class uh, is between the fulcrum and the fort in second class levers. Uh, see figure figure S uh, C and second class levers operate like a wheelbarrow. They always produce a mechanical advantage because the load is always closer to the fulcrum than the effort. This arrangement uh, sacrifice speed and range of motion for force this type of levers produce the most force you could find such uh, type of uh, levers in uh, legs but the third class levers uh, the d uh, it is between the uh, fulcrum and the load uh, when um, uh, the levers operate like a pair of forceps and are the most common levers in the body. Third class levers always produce a mechanical disadvantage because the fort is always close to the fulcrum than the load. In the body, this arrangement was speed and range of motion over the force. Uh, here you see uh, one of the three types of muscle activity. And first is the static, static work, when muscles support various posture and body position. In this case, the length of the muscles does not change. You see here, women which just only keep uh, their uh, limbs and uh, uh, she, uh, she doesn't move them. Uh, this is an overcoming walk. It is the second type of the muscle activity when uh, uh, the muscles overcome the weight of the body part and external force. And uh, the third type, this is a yielding work in which a muscle is stretched by an external force. Almost each muscle, every muscle has assistance and it would be uh, fascia this is the connective tissue around the muscles it would be superficial intrinsic and internal fascia and uh, why uh, fascia uh, is such uh, is such popular and you could find uh, fascia almost in every muscle because uh, it protects uh, muscles they uh, they uh, are protected by fascia fascia also saves the strength uh, when muscle is uh, when muscle contracts it eliminates the friction uh, because uh, it is um, very smoothly object uh, fascia uh, stretches wings uh, by participation in the blood circulation of muscles. Uh, it limits the spread 
of infection and tumors. And it is also important for doctors because fascia are landmarks, are good landmarks during surgical operation. Here you see the uh, fibrous and osteofibrous canals uh, in uh, where, where tendo come through uh, through near the bones and they um, have special uh, special uh, uh, band bandage which uh, keep a uh, tendo near to the uh, bones and uh, to reduce uh, to reduce um, um, friction uh, we could find uh, such elements as a vagin uh, or synovial sheath we call that uh, in Latin uh, vagin, uh, vagin, but that is not vagin, as uh, you uh, may uh, understand for the first time. But that is a synovial street, a synovial sheath, uh, which are located under uh, fascial fascial element, and uh, they uh, usually reduce uh, reduce friction. Synovial bursa, this is a yellow structure here. Uh, they are located under muscles between uh, joints and also reduce friction. And the last, uh, last uh, uh, assistance, uh, muscle assistance are sesamate bones. You uh, you were thought about uh, these uh, bones. We uh, studied uh, osteology or bones. And uh, muscle development. Muscle development. Uh, muscle uh, usually uh, developed uh, from the uh, mesoderm. Mesoderm. This is the uh, intermediate intermediate uh, layer in uh, embryonic layer and usually uh, they uh, they uh, mesoderm produced and transform in the um, dermatom myotom and sclerotom myotom is a part of mesoderm which uh, is a, in, uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is the elements uh, develop, uh, are developing are development uh, in uh, the muscles. Myotomes uh, may be uh, dorsal or ventral. Uh, ventral myotome located on the uh, uh, on the um, ventral or anterior uh, part of the body, but Posterior, uh, posterior myotome are located in the posterior uh, part of the body. It, it is visible in the embryo section here. And the myotomes are located in embryons like uh, strips. All of this structure we call myotomes. They would be uh, ventral or dorsal and then uh, uh, they will be developed in the uh, muscles, uh, almost all muscles produced from the, such myotome. And uh, the last uh, part of our lecture is the uh, regional muscles. And we will see what kind of muscles we could find in our head. So, uh, in head we have uh, two, two group of muscles. Facial muscles, they are located uh, in uh, the face, usually around, uh, around uh, some of the anatomical structure like orbit, uh, cavities, or, uh, oral cavity, nasal cavity, and they may, uh, as well as uh, around uh, our earth, and they may be uh, concentrated as a uh, circulate muscles and so 
then uh, works as a sphincters and uh, uh, or here this is the orbicular oris muscles they is also it is also sphincter but some of the muscles uh, are uh, uh, located radially radially so they uh, works as a uh, uh, dilatators dilatators it is visible uh, it is uh, good visible in the oral muscles uh, here you see also muscles uh, of uh, our uh, ear it is auricular muscles and one uh, muscles is uh, between uh, between uh, occipital bone and uh, frontal uh, bone and we call uh, these muscles uh, occipitofrontal muscles all uh, muscular epicranium uh, and uh, also one of the muscles come uh, to the face from the neck is called uh, platysma it is also uh, is relative for uh, muscles mus uh, for uh, facial facial muscles and the second group of the head muscles called masticatory muscles they um, masticatory muscles um, origin to uh, insertion insert to the uh, mandibula and they move uh, uh, mandibula and help us to uh, produce energy for chewing uh, there are two uh, external masticatory muscles we call them masseter and uh, temporal temporalis muscles and uh, in deep uh, deep in the head we could find two pterygoid muscles lateral and medial pterygoid all of, of four these muscles are masticatory and uh, mm, neck muscles neck muscles uh, this is the uh, group muscles located on the neck and uh, uh, first group of neck muscles is superficial neck muscles it is also platysma uh, you, mostly it is located on the neck and uh, this is uh, uh, st uh, sternocleidomastoid muscles between mastoid process and uh, uh, sternum and clavicula so this is such as a long name it has sternocleidomastoid muscles uh, then another group of neck muscles this is a subrachiate and infrachiate muscles we call them middle group of neck muscles and uh, all of these muscles connect to the hyoid bone uh, uh, suprahyoid muscles located up to the hyoid bone but uh, infrahyoid muscles uh, are located in uh, uh, under uh, hyoid bone and uh, the mm, deep muscles that is the third group of neck located uh, close to the vertebral column that would be uh, scalene uh, scalene three scalene muscles and uh, some group of muscles located medially one of them are long uh, curly muscles and long caput muscles and two short muscles between the uh, occipital bone and uh, the first uh, vertebra first, first cervical vertebra I hope this is uh, uh, help you to understand uh, how muscles are look like and how they work and uh, the detailed information about uh, head and neck muscles you get in your practical lessons that is all for now and uh, as usual I am waiting your questions do you have questions Uh, I'm waiting uh, your response if you if you 
If you have questions, please let me know. Okay. Thank you, Marsha. You are very welcome. Okay. If there are no questions, then let me uh, congratulate with the coming new year and uh, uh, wish you good health and uh, good luck in your study and I hope that uh, you uh, in the next year you will have a possibility to come to our university and start uh, regularly studying uh, as uh, all students uh, and I wish you offline studying in the coming year. Thank you very much. That is all for now and uh, I will be glad to see you uh, next year in our uh, anatomical course. Thank you and have a nice new year. Congratulations. Bye-bye, my friend.